Hey everyone, welcome to the final lesson in the WordPress Custom Metabox course. This lesson is going to be a summary of the material that we've covered so that you have some sort of a visual reference to refer back to as you begin to work with the information that we covered in this course on a day-to-day -day basis. Early in the course, we started talking about web servers, specifically those that run on Apache, PHP, and MySQL. We introduced WAMP, which is specifically for Windows. We talked about XAMPP or XAMPP, which is a cross-distribution platform for Linux, Windows, and Mac OS X. And then we talked about MAMP. Uh, MAMP is a free version and MAMP Pro is a paid version. Throughout the course, we use MAMP Pro, although we did say that MAMP would be suitable for most people, and this is exclusively for Macs. Then we moved on to developing a plugin. During the course of the plugin development, we used the Add Metabox API. This can be found in the WordPress codex, as can all of the following articles. Metaboxes are the units of information that appear throughout the WordPress dashboard that provide some information or that users may interact with in order to save data, add data, remove data, etc. for post pages and other custom post types. We also covered the topic of post metadata. And this is whenever you want to save information related to a specific post, page, or custom post type that isn't related to necessarily the title or the content or anything related to the page editor. This is how we saved our mp3 title and the mp3 file. We also used get post meta. This is how we retrieved the information from the database that was added with the add post meta call. And we also talked about how you can retrieve it using a string or you can retrieve it as an array. We then talked about several WordPress hooks. One of the actions was add metaboxes. This is the hook that we used in order to register our custom metabox with WordPress so that it would know what to render. In addition, we also talked about the save post action. This is what allowed us to serialize our data to the database using the WordPress API and the data contained within our custom metabox. Finally, we talked about the content. And the content is a filter in which we hooked into that would allow us to manipulate the content that was rendered on the page for our readers. Specifically, it allowed us to add information to the bottom of the post that would give readers the ability to download an MP3 that was attached to a given post or that would prevent us from displaying anything if there was no MP3. Finally, everything that we did falls under the WordPress plugin API. This is a very rich resource that I highly recommend anyone looking to learn how to write professional WordPress plugins read through. You can see the table of contents. You can see the function references. You can see the actions. And you can see an entire set of examples for how to get started. Of course, this is just the beginning of what you can do with WordPress plugins. And I hope that the material in this course provided you with the necessary education, steps, and resources to help you go further with your WordPress development. In addition to this course, the plugin that we developed will be fully documented in the code and will be made available for you to download and install in your WordPress installation so that you can further tinker with it in order to get an idea of how things work. I really enjoyed teaching this class. I hope you have enjoyed it as well, and I will see you in the next one.